win. A big decision has been made. Um, what's, what's next? Well, it wasn't just a big decision. It is the biggest decision. Uh, now, it is, of course, one in a series of decisions on the Green Line, but I want to remind people that the Green Line is not only the largest public works project in the history of Calgary, it's about three and a half times bigger than the second largest project. So Council made a momentous decision today by an overwhelming majority, nearly unanimously, uh, to proceed. And what I really want to remind people about is we've had so many conversations about this as though it was an engineering project, as though it was an expense for the city, and it is those things. But it is, number one, an investment in transit, an investment in helping people's commutes get better, safer, and faster, and an investment in building the city. And so we have an outstanding transit investment, and I cannot wait to get shovels in the ground. Do you think the fact that it's broken up into three segments now makes the construction process slower for that bridge over the Bow River and two steps back. No, so my favorite words, as everyone who works at the city knows, are on time, on budget. And the reason that we've done so much upfront work on this project is to ensure that we wouldn't have surprises going forward. So to be very clear, what Council approved today is in fact what was before committee a couple of weeks ago. But it was important for some members of council to get a little more clarity on the timing and the staging of the project. And so the, recommend, the complicated 17 recommendations today really were just adding some wallpaper to the walls of the house of the recommendation that was, uh, that was put to committee a couple weeks ago. So this does mean that bridge is getting built. It does mean that the entire project from 16th Avenue in the north to Shepherd in the south is going forward as one project. Now, it will be procured and constructed in a series of projects, but it is one grand project and it's all going forward. How does breaking up that procurement affect the timetable for the project? Then? Well, you heard from Mr. Thompson tonight, uh, please make a decision right now, because it is tight. Um, but it does mean that the bridge will be built a little bit later than the rest, but it should all still open at the same time as originally planned. Uh, Fingers crossed. That is certainly what we're looking at now. Uh, so when you ask Mr. Thompson, when I asked Mr. Thompson in there, he said this had really had always been one of their strategies that they were considering, and it is a strategy that makes sense to them and they're comfortable with. You know, there were members of council last week that were saying they were against building the bridge. Uh, there were. But today they voted in favor of building a bridge. Can they did. Help me understand what in what was before council today caused people to change their minds. I'm sure others will have different explanations for the politics of what happened there. My explanation is pretty straightforward. The citizens of Calgary made their voices heard and they made it extremely clear that they wouldn't fall for any trickery. That would mean that the North would never get the LRT and building that bridge was necessary for the North to get the LRT. But what is it about these recommendations that makes absolutely everybody, no matter how they seem to feel in the past week, view this as a victory for their side? It's a victory for Calgarians. Uh, and I will, you set it up, you can't get no, all. that wasn't my question, <laughs> it sir. It was a softball. That was not my question, <laughs> sir. Everybody seems to feel they see in the recommendations that their points have succeeded. Well, as I say, it really is a victory for all Calgarians. Ultimately, I am pleased that people see a bit of their own work in the results. I'm pleased that they see their advocacy uh, making a difference, uh, but I will also point to the fact that this is exactly the recommendation that was before committee two weeks ago. Okay, I'll try another one. Did you want Fox them? What kind of a question is that? I'm just asking. <laughs> no, um, you know, ultimately this is a collaborative process. I'm just one vote. Uh, and the fact that we got to 14 votes uh, and I did lose my pool, uh, I think is a great example of how this council, which is, works on a nonpartisan basis where people with very different points of view can come together and do what's right for the city. Uh, this is how city council should work. And I'm very pleased to see that that is how it did work. Are you concerned at all that other levels of government, specifically the provincial government, could in turn pull its funding or reconsider its funding for this project? Well, that is always a risk. Um, because we don't have uh, the signed funding agreements yet. But we have had promises from 
four different premiers, two different prime ministers, innumerable ministers of transportation and infrastructure provincially and federally, that this is a project that uh, we will continue with. Maybe only three premiers. Uh, so to me, we are really in a position where it would be very, very, very difficult for other orders of government to pull back on that promise they made to Calgarians. Now, all of that said, a lot has happened. So we have some time, and it was in the recommendations today, to finalize those funding agreements uh, with the other orders of government. I'm sure they'll want to do their own technical reviews and analysis of what we've done, but it is solid work. And so I really look forward, maybe even in person, if it's a little bit of a time from now, to signing those funding agreements uh, with the other orders of government. I, I think it would be politically, practically, and, uh, and, and frankly, morally untenable for them to pull the funding at this point. So now that you have this vote, RMP for the South East Lake can go out, that goes first. What can Calgarians expect to see in, in years ahead? So I want to highlight uh, what Mr. Thompson said today, which is the southeast portion from the Elbow River to Shepherd is still a huge, complicated pro, uh, program. I mean, one of them by itself, it's probably the largest public works pro project in Calgary's history. So it's 13 kilometers of LRT. But most of that land is secured. Most of those rights of way are secured. So once the contract is out uh, and we get the best price and the best contract, we'll be seeing construction start in earnest on that as early as next year. Now remember, this is a lot of construction. We're not anticipating that this project will open until 2026 or 2027. Um, so there is a lot of work yet to be done. But I think Calgarians will be excited to see those two rails coming towards them. Um, not a lot of people understand the term stage gating. So with what council has approved today? Well, it has to do with stage gating in a Monte Carlo simulation to get you to a P80 estimate. P80. Um, has everyone got that? If there were to be an Ottawa LRT type of situation, mm -hmm. what are the financial risks to the city of Calgary, and how have you mitigated that with these recommendations approved today? Of course, on a big project like this, there is significant financial risk. Now, every major project since I was elected has come in on time and on budget. And that's very important to me that the city of Calgary has created those skills to be able to deliver capital projects on time and on budget. Not a lot of cities uh, have the ability to do that. But this one is really complicated, and one of the reasons why it has taken this period of time to get here is because we really wanted to cross our I's and dot our T's to make sure that we were mitigating the risk as best as possible. Uh, so that has been done. The budget also carries within it an extraordinarily large contingency, which hopefully we won't have to use and we'll be able to build more stations, but it is in there now to mitigate against the risk of going over budget. Finally, uh, the stage gating, which is a, I don't know if that's a technical term, but what it means to me is you're going to get started on the really complicated stuff before you do the slightly less complicated stuff. And that means that you'll be able to see, if I can be just very blunt about it, when you open up the ground to build that trench, you'll see if there's something there that you didn't think was there. And that really does give you the opportunity to make sure that you're mitigating against those risks before you go too far. Uh, further down the track. So I'm confident, I'm nervous, it's a big project, but I'm confident that we've developed the skills uh, here in Calgary to be able to deliver those things on budget. So that final procurement for the bridge and the Santa Street portion, that literally is like the last line of defense, right? You have things built in ahead of it. Well, it may not be separately procured, just to be super technical about it. It will just be built after the, and it won't be built at the end. It's not like the whole thing will be built to Eau Claire and then the bridge will be built. It'll be built once we have enough assurance that the rest of the project is ha -ha, on track. Uh, but the procurement might be one contract. It might be one set of builders that will start there and end there. It might be two contracts, it might be multiple ones. Uh, and today's recommendations gives administration the flexibility to do that. This is the second time council's voted on Once uh, those contracts are granted, council actually cannot go back and vote on it again. It's not even a reconsideration, they actually cannot. Um, so what happened was uh, we did that work in 2017. 
but we really did after that hear, and, and to be fair, hear from a lot of Calgarians that you've heard in opposition to the project, some very thoughtful technical questions. And so what today was really about, sort of funny because there's been so much drama about it, but really we only did two things today. We moved from 10th Avenue to 12th, and 12th Avenue in the Beltline to 11th Avenue, and oh, three things. We turned the tunnel under the Bow River into a bridge, and we added a station at 9th Avenue in Crescent Heights. That's it. Um, the alignment that we had approved, the whole rest of the alignment we approved in 2017 is still in place. Uh, but because we listened to a lot of Calgarians, a lot of engineering experts, we're an engineering town after all, about ways that we could do a better job through the Beltline uh, and across the Bow River, those were the changes that we approved today. There's already been so much public consultation, but moving forward through the construction process, how will Calgarians still be engaged in each stage of the construction? So right now, there are kind of two bits that still need some public engagement and consultation on. Uh, the first and most important one is around the streetscape and mitigating the impacts of construction on Centre Street, uh, over the river and on Centre Street. So we're still going to be doing some work there. We have kind of approved in principle that there's going to be a station at 9th Ave, there's going to be one at 16th Ave, that the train will run surface in the alignment on Centre Street. But there's a lot of questions left to be sorted out about how that's going to look, how that's going to interface with pedestrians and cars and sidewalks, about how buses will work uh, on that corridor. So a lot of that needs to be done. Um, there will still be a bit of engagement with neighbours uh, in the Beltline and through the downtown core, mostly focused on mitigating the impacts of construction which, by the way, will be significant. The construction will be no fun uh, for a lot of folks. But beyond that, there's been so much engagement done on this, and thank you to so many thousands of Calgarians who participated that we really are ready to go. There was also talk that if there are capital savings we could add to the south end of the line. Is that uh, something that we could be looking forward to? Council's and direction is that from 2017, which still holds, uh, excuse me, from 20. 19, which still holds, is that if there are savings, they would be applied either to go to Mackenzie Town in the south or to 40th Avenue in the north, depending on prioritization criteria, the route ahead prioritization criteria that are coming back to council this fall. This has been touted as a job creator as well. Um, people in the city obviously looking forward to jobs. Uh, how soon do you think that we could see this, this actually being created? You know, it's already started. Uh, we have spent, uh, as you've heard, nearly half a billion dollars on this project, or more than half a billion dollars on this project already. And that is jobs. That's real estate people and accountants and engineers and consultants, um, hydrology folks helping us figure out how to build this, as well as we've actually done a fair bit of construction on what we call early works or enabling works. We anticipate that what was approved today will create 20,000 person years of employment uh, over the course of construction which means that it is by far the single largest job creation vehicle that we have uh, in Alberta right now. And so we will see those, those jobs are really gonna start right away. There's, a per, there's an RFP that goes out next week, so people who respond to RFPs, or, or the week after, people who respond, procurement folks, analysts, are gonna start finding work right away just in responding to the RFP. And we should have you know, guys and gals in hard hats and steel toes working on those enabling works right away and getting to work on the big construction as early as next year. How do you respond to the criticism from some quarters that the procurement process will wind up in money and jobs leaving Calgary? Like if a, it's, you know, if a big it's sort European of a, consortium wins a piece of this. It's kind of a weird argument, to be honest, because regardless of whose name is on the paycheck, it's gonna be the local people doing the work. They will hire people here in Calgary to actually get to work. They're not gonna import folks uh, with their PPE from France to come in uh, and do the construction work here. So yeah, some of the managers might be from a different place or the profits may go elsewhere, but ultimately those are local people working locally, supporting local business. And to me, that's the critical issue. And if we can get a better price by having a, a really thoughtful uh, procurement process, that means more money for more local jobs. Okay, thank you everybody.